We've got a little PM on a water furnace, Series 5. I installed this 2016 sometime. Uh, I think it was October or so. So it's an open loop, geothermal. We got our supply coming in, going to the source in, if you can see it. Source in, source out. And then it comes out, and we have our solenoid valve. You can connect these basically to Y1 in common. So when the compressor contactor pulls in, it energizes these. Uh, pretty, pretty simple stuff here. It's not really too difficult. This is a NDH049 2016 model, Series 5. A good unit. Hadn't had no problems. He just wanted us to check it out and also clean his uh, dehumidifier filter for him and change the setting on. He said it's running all the time. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to gauge up to her. All right, we're in normal mode standby. DCM speeds, fan motor speeds 2, 7, 9, and 10. That's for fan only, Y1, Y2, electric heat. Reverse and valves energize on the O terminal. Accessory relay, relay doesn't matter. Accessory relay would be these contacts here. They're just dry contacts. And then your thermostat inputs here if you're using a typical heat pump thermostat, but we're using a four wire communicating stat. So we're using the four wire setup. And that's pretty nice too, because it does dehumidification and everything else all by itself. And uh, there ain't a whole, much, a whole lot to it. I mean, you got a contactor, a transformer, and a solid state board. Man, that's about it. You know, all your switches and stuff down here, your low pressure, high pressure, freeze protection. High pressure switch, low pressure switch, freeze protection one and two, reverse and valve. And over here, this small X plug is your compressor high, your compressor low. And just a quick overview of the board here. There you go. Yeah, that should do it. And here's your high, low pressure switches, all your safeties, and your electric heat strips go into these terminals up top. There, I already got a wire running back there. You just have to plug the wire in. Where I said you can take your wire from your compressor contactor and send that wire up out of the unit. Goes right down to the solenoid valve. All set there. All right, let's take this bad boy in high gear and check her performances out. So we're going to go to. I don't know if you guys can see it, so I'm going to go back. We'll go to diagnostics and thermostat inputs. Want to override thermostat? Yes. Hit the OK button. Turn on Y1. Turn on Y2. Turn on G and we'll leave O off because we're doing a heating. This is a fall PM. They want to check the heating performance. Let's get going on that. So we just hit OK. And things are clicking and popping. You hold this test button down until the green light shuts off. And that puts it in test mode, speeds up the timers, and we ain't got to wait for it. So she's kicking. So you feel if we got water flow, and we'll check it with our gauges. Because this doesn't have all the goodies on it to actually do it all at the aid tool, the Aurora aid tool. So we'll get our water pressure drop real quick. We'll let it run a few minutes before we get temperatures. So we want to get our water in, water out. If you can see it, brine in, brine out. To get our pressure drop, and we're going to consult a manual that I have on my phone, an app. You know they have an app for that. Yeah, it looks like we got 16 psi going in. Should be less going out. Pressure drop. 13. 13, 16. That is, of course, is 3. And I want to see what our entering water temperature is. It's probably in the low 60s. 64, 65, 66, something like that. And that's going to be just about the same because it is an open loop. 
So it's coming directly out of the ground and just dumping it back into the, the stream, the creek bed down there, a few hundred foot down, down the hill, 65 degrees. Now we're running, letting it run, so we're gonna go ahead and get our model and serial number. All right, we got all that information. 65 entering water. It's always a good idea to keep you a little bit of petroleum jelly on the job. Not just for your skin, but to lube your devices. And it helps them slip in and out and it makes them last longer. A good geothermal trick. I've destroyed a few probes pulling the handles out right there and got another one taped up in the bag that's all messed up. 55. It's 10 degrees. So, we go to our trusty old little phone app here. We got an NDH 049. I'll go ahead and put that snapshot in. All right, high speed, that's what we're looking for. High speed, heating. We go to our 60, what is it, 65 degrees, 6570. We had a three pound drop, that's 12 GPM. I call it 11 GPM. So we're looking for heat of rejection, heat of extraction, I'm sorry, right there. Bring that down. We should be somewhere around 36 to 40 thousand BTUs. So we'll do the math real quick. I'm gonna call that 10 GPM times 500 times 10. What's that 04? That's 50,000. 55,000 BTUs and she was only needing to do 40. So that could be just a miscalculation on the uh, water pressure drop side. That's closer to 15 on this, and then out would be. So that's more like a two and a half pound drop. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down now. Well, like I said, it was like two and a half. So if we were two and a half pound drop, is nine GPM. 15, so there's two pound drops of so nine times five hundred times ten. Forty-five thousand BTUs. And the book was saying between forty and thirty-six. That's good. So that's I mean that's basically a PM for a uh, geothermal unit. You ain't got to do a whole lot. It even tells you, do not hook up pressure gauges unless there appears to be a performance problem. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can take your temperature drop. It's about usually 30, 30 degrees or so. That's why I know that them think these things heat up good. I'm not gonna show you this time because I don't wanna burn them folks up inside. I'll show you that on another video. Make sure these are on, they're very important for a closed loop anyway, an open loop not so bad. But you want to make sure you got your little rubbers. Little rubbers. You want to make sure they're in there because on an open loop, those things will leak. And they will drip and drip. And you'll be back in four to six months juicing the loop up with the old uh, juicer there. Which is just a ball valve. Little nipple. A little couple fittings you pick up at Lowe's and you build it yourself. Probably about $32 in parts here. All right, let's get this thing unplugged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that zipped up, that zipped up. The capacitor is brand new. I mean, I'm not, there's not a whole lot I'm gonna do with this. You know what I mean? I'm going to open it up and just show you guys the inside here. When you're opening it up, though, the door swings, so you want to make sure you don't hit none of your wires over here and cut them and electrocute yourself because this does have a lot of power on it. They recommend turning it off when you're doing stuff like this, but sometimes you got to have it running to hook your gauges up. It comes with a shipping bolt right there. A shipping bolt that you want to take out from that hole. It frees the compressor up so it's not noisy. You got your coax coil on the back, your expansion valve right there, your filter dryer right there, reversing valve, muffler, 
Yeah, my first not rubbing the wires any. They look good. Our uh, gray and white and black and white jumpers you take off when you install a heat strip. Because once you install a heat strip, the transformer gets its power from the heat strip side of the circuit. And uh, yeah, there ain't much to it. You got a coax coil and then an evaporator coil on the other side. There's very little to these units, but they're amazing pieces of equipment. All right, on with the work. The way we can expect inspect his coil over there. We'll see about getting that done. Which I know on a unit less than a year old, there's probably not very much much wrong with it. this thing back on. Make sure everything is secured to the back. You plug transformer in, that's your transformer wires, the black, blue, and red. The red is your 208, the blue is your 240. Transformer's also got a little fuse popper on it, which is always nice. So you're not worried about tripping fuses. You got a fuse on the board right here. Everything on here is pretty much low voltage. High voltage is over here. So, I mean, it's very simple. The capacitor and gun and telestart, which reduces your starting torque by 200%, I want to say. It might be just 70%. I don't remember. I have to look that back up again. But, yeah, back to these wires. You go to note two here. If I find note two. The black and white and the gray wires are removed when auxiliary heat is installed. Failure to do so will cause your breakers to trip because you'd be wiring your 240 from your transformer side and your 240 from your heat strip side together. And when you turn on your disconnects, both breakers are basically wired together. Pow, done that before. Let's see what we got over here, if we can get this coil out. Oh yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a mess, ain't she? She's a mess. You know, we have to do some real serious work to that. It's beautiful. <clears throat> All right, let's go take a look at the other side. Uh, Looks like we got a leaker over there on a humidifier. We have to try and do something about that too. He used to have a Florida heat pump split unit in here and we got rid of that old shabby thing because it was ancient oh yeah I mean there's a whole lot to do on a PM with these units there's your coil inside I don't think I've ever showed you these yet there's not a whole lot to them just make sure your manifold over there isn't got any of the coppers rubbing together should be good to go pan strip we replace that in the summer the blower wheel is clean and uh yeah, that's about all there is to it. Not much of it at all. Let me relay for your heat strips, and your heat strips are actually in the front of the unit in the ductwork here. They're in this box, and the heat strips are in there, and they come through a hole down there somewhere. I don't know, probably cannot see it. But, uh, yeah, they're all. No, it was up at the top. I'm sorry. Yeah, you wire it from the top. So that comes down, feeds into the back, plugs into a plug, and all that good stuff. And that's a quick overview of a brand new Series 5 water furnace. I hope it was interesting. These are made in Fort Wayne, Indiana, with Copeland scroll compressors. And yeah, like I said, a winter PM on a water furnace. Uh, you make sure she's got the expected heat of extraction. Interpolating it the best way you can to make sure there's no performance problems. We're gonna run back here and do something with this dehumidifier.
setting right there, about three and a half. It was set to about six, and he said it never shut off. And it's nice and toasty in here. It's pretty dry, and I don't think it's humid at all. All right, put our little leveler on it. This backside needed to come up a little. And Conse pump seems to work. I like I like that clear design. That's that's nice. All right, and that's it. Well, he'll be happy. Everything looks good. I don't see nothing else. We killed the lights, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.